video we're just going to go over a bubble sort um, and in going over the bubble sort we're going to actually we're going to uh, show you what's happening in RAM with the numbers we're going to start off by just demonstrating with uh, numerical values and putting it into Java then we're going to start working with classes and sorting sorry? Oh, you can um, alright so let's say we've got uh, 5, 8, 12, 6, 1, 22, 3 so we've got the following, that's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, we've got 7 numbers here. And if I've got that in an array, now I'm showing a bit of syntax that's a little bit shorter than what uh, what you might have seen previously with regards to arrays, is you can just go, so this is an array of numbers, okay, so I'm just calling it this, it's just a local variable, it's nothing fancy. Um, what you can do is you can actually, I can't remember if it's semicolon or if it's comma afterwards, so it might be one or the other, I don't remember. but um, this would actually literally put in to the array um, the seven separate values. Um, do you guys get that? So it's creating an array of size. Now this array is not, not a fancy array like we've been learning. It's literally a static sized array. The fact that it's t uh, seven in length, so it's got zero to seven. And uh, yeah. Okay, so now if we, if we go on from this, if I wanted to... Uh, sort it. We went through the idea that we worked with the bubble sort where basically what we did is we had two variables. We have, um, sorry I'm wanting to just move everything a bit down. Um, we have i and we have j. j starts at 0 and what happens is, is i goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it will look and it will put in the position the smallest value. So uh, is 8 smaller than 5? Is 12 smaller? So if I'm sorting from smallest to biggest, is 12 smaller than 5? Is 6 smaller than 5? Is 1? Yes. So then we would do the swap function that we went through yesterday. Uh, so what would happen is this would swap using the temporary variable space and 1 would be moved up. And then it would continue. Is, uh, is 22 sp smaller than 1? Is 3 smaller than 1? So what's basically happened is it's found the, p the, p the smallest value. Then i increases. i then becomes 1. So i then becomes 1. So this is the what, um, what knowledge was saying is this, this would be an example of pass 1. So pass 1 does that. Now the second step, pass 2, i starts on 1, j starts on 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You guys get that? And then what's going to happen is now uh, we are looking at this position. Is 12 smaller than 8? Is 6 smaller than 8? So we swap them. And then, okay, so now and then it goes down here. Is 5 smaller than 6? So it swaps them. Oops, sorry. Wrong <laughs> one. Okay. And then is 22 smaller than uh, 5? Is 3 smaller than 5? Yeah. So then on the second pass, it would have got it to be... So the second, we've now got the smallest and the second smallest. So the third pass, I'm not going to do all of the passes, but the third pass would be... But then I would start on 2, and then it would go 3, 4, 5, 6. So I'll try to find the third smallest. Do you guys get that? Yeah. Now how we code that, and, and guys, please do pay attention for this, because it is uh, easy marks uh, to sort is quite commonly asked but the idea of this is can be applied to solve a lot of issues so what we're going to do here is I'm just literally going to go for tab for tab automatically opens up a loop right and literally inside of it I'm just going to go for tab again so now I've got a loop inside my loop <coughs> do you guys get that and I'm going to say I I want to start at zero and I'm going to stop it at array num dot length so in other words, it's going to loop from 0 to, uh, to 6, right? Because the size is 7, so while i is starts at 0, and while it's less than 7, so it'll go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it's going to go. Now my j, where do I want my j to start? Uh, no, not, not 1. i plus 1. Because you check, j starts, when i is 0, j starts at 1. When i is 1, j starts at 2. When i is 2, J starts at 3. So J always starts, because like, like I, I, we briefly explained yesterday, 
What is the purpose? If I have found the smallest value, what is the purpose for me looking there again? Yeah. It's none. So I go on to the next smallest. So I start there. So I go from there. Now, um, now when do we want to end? Also, a a a r r dot length. Now, oops, man. Now, <coughs> this is minus one. Why? Uh, we would never compare six to six because yeah. if all the rest are all in order the sixth one must be in order. Uh, it's like I'm comparing position six with six wow yeah. actually it wouldn't it would actually end it wouldn't even run so technically it's, it's, it's only a one iteration but academically uh, truth be told quite frankly it's, it's negligible the, as far as processing use that that would take up if you didn't minus one it is nothing it's like well quicker than that it's nothing, and uh, in truth be told, I don't think people uh, at, at companies would be that, that irritated by it. But it's just bad logic. So as academically, they do, they they, they might deduct a mark. Um, so I'll, I'm going to deduct a mark now because of I'd rather teach you guys good habits for when you do if you do it for when it's marked externally, when it gets a uh, university and stuff, um, or in or in a uh, metric. Okay, so dot one now all i'm going to do right now i'm going to start i every single time i changes i'm going to start i and i'm going to say plus the value i you guys get that and every time j starts i'm going to start j and i'm actually going actually i'm going to put a backslash t before and so i'm going to put a tab in front of it so we can actually have a bit more space between it and then i'm going to say plus j so we're just going to see what this loop does and when i run it you'll see that it goes, I starts at zero, right? J goes one, two, three, four, five, six. I starts at one, it goes two, three, four, five, six. I starts at two, three, four, five, six. Three, four, five, six. Four, five, six. Five, six. So you see the inner loop loops on the basis of the outer loop. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the inner, yeah, the inner, yeah, that way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah nested yeah. loops. So it's like an nested loop, it's just a nested loop. Now, what we've got to do here is now instead of uh, printing it out we actually don't want to print it out i'm just going to comment out my printout that's the tongue twister and we're just going to say if open brackets um arr num position j i like to do it from i i want to see if the j position is less than the array num i position because i'm trying to see if uh, j is less than i i should swap them i could do it the other way around i could say if i is greater than j yeah, yeah. I, I just don't understand that to me it makes more sense that i'm seeing if i want if that one that i'm looking at is smaller then i should swap it i'm not looking at this one bigger it's the way you see it in your head whatever whichever way makes sense in your head but the thing is you can quite easily accidentally sort ascending or descending so this for example would be um i'm going to sort ascending so this is an example of sorting ascending okay and then in which case if it does then what i'm going to do is i am going to swap them so to swap them um i'm going to go uh so that we need to swap so what do we need to do is we need to create a temporary variable or some of you guys you were mentioning yesterday you would like to call it swap and yeah. um, if that makes more sense to you what it really doesn't matter um, position i and then what i could say is array num position i is equal to array num we, we went over the logic of this yesterday so i'm not going to go over it again and then we go array num position j is equal to 10. so literally we just sorry not 10 swap okay guys you can call this temp you can call it swap you can call it batman I mean, I, I think they might, might not be very happy if you call it Batman, but, um, but uh, yeah. you can call it whatever you want, it doesn't matter. But now it's, it's swapping the data around. I mean, obviously you do want it to have some form of logical on, on, on the name, but um, so it's swapping around. Now, I want to check if my stuff works. I want to print it out at the end of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a method, um, just so that I can, in this video, also just show you a bit of method stuff. 
I'm, I'm, I'm creating, I haven't created a GUI, I'm not creating classes, I'm literally just creating a method to display uh, array. And this is going to receive in an int array called R, and then I'm going to print that, that, that one out. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to say uh, sat tab, well we have to have a loop, wouldn't we? So we'll go uh, for tab 0 to ARR dot length. So I'm looping, do you guys understand that? I'm just looping through from position 0 to the array. Um, length returns the size of the array. So like we, we use a counter, we use a counter to keep track of where we're at in a massive array. This array is only the size that we've declared it. So it goes to the length of it. Now, in this case, we are going to do a system. Now, I'm doing a system dot out. I'm not doing the shortcut. The reason why is I don't want to do a print line. I want to do a print. So I, I've never really shown you this before. It's because it's, it's not often used, but it, it can be used. So I just want to show it to you. Um, print. I'm then going to say I want to print um, array position i plus a comma space okay mm -hmm. and then at the end I'm going to do a sat now the reason why system.out.print will just append things into a line but only when you go print line does it actually write it to the screen and it presses the enter does this make sense so now when I press uh, after I've done this I want to print it so I'm going to say after I've done the, the, the whole uh, loop thing in my outer loop I want to then uh, print this, so I'm just going to go print, what did I actually call it? Display, display array. And I'm going to send through that. <coughs> and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a now, okay, so let's just play it first, show you that it does work. 1, 3, 5, 6, 8, 12, 22. That's right, right? Mm -hmm. So it's from this order to that order. What I could also do is I could print it here first. So display all. This is why I created it as a method. So I could display it there, and then I could display it later. So if you create a method, sweet. I display it before and after. <coughs> yeah. So um, now, the next thing that we're going to do is, what if I wanted to sort a descending? I would literally just go copy, paste. I'll just change this to a... Uh, J is greater than R swap it. And now what I'm, then after this loop, I'm also just going to run the method display all. What I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to start a descending. Before this one, I'm going to start ascending. And this one, I'm going to start original. Just so that we can actually see what's going on. It sometimes helps just to give you a bit of, uh, this is ascending. And I'm just going to put a comment here saying descending so the user knows that now I'm trying to sorting it descending. So now if I run this, if I press play, you'll see the original ascending, descending. So it sorts it out there. Now the next question we're going to do is we're going to now apply this to a, a um, our class structures where we've got more of a complicated array. So to do that, I'm going to go to our example that we've done together. I'm trying to remember an example we've done as a class. Um, I don't want to do it to something difficult. Was the game ratings easy? Or oh, prac cycle memo. Let me do the prac cycle memo. Okay, so I'm just going to apply it to the prac cycle memo. Um, it's going to open up that project, close the, minimize this project. Now, just to familiarize yourselves with this, in this class, we have a user interface, which is, has got just a, literally a uh, text area. I'm going to add a little bit of, uh, of complexity to it. I'm going to add, I'm going to, I'm now going to add a panel at the bottom. Um, and in this panel, I'm going to have a button to say sort, and I'll, I'll code this up a, a, as we go along. But I'm just going to create buttons to sort of sending, descending, uh, display wall or something like that. So I'll just say all edit text descending ascending. Now a couple of uh, small differences with this is one is one we have a situation where we have a view class and we have a view manager. So now if I wanted to create a method, I would just go. I'll say 
public void. You guys follow so far? Public void, and I'll say sort ascending. So this is my sort ascending method. Now, the shortcut of, of creating anything, or, or to do a sort, or bubble sort at least, for tab, for tab, you start at zero, you end. Now, we, d we don't... We don't want to end at 500 or 1,000, 500. Do we want to end at 500? No, we want to end at? Num views here dictates how long the, 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 fifth, the array is. So num views. Uh, minus one, right? In a loop, I plus one. This one ends at num views. Here we want to check if we, now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Now that it's an object, I want if I'm going to compare them, if I can't say if uh, views position J is greater than views position R, why can I not do that? Sorry, this should be less than because it's ascending. Why can I not do that? Because it's it, I didn't receive the value I'm sorting on. I can't sort on a whole object. A whole object is like it's like, guys, get into order. What order? You have no idea what order to get into because I didn't specify by what attribute you should be getting an order to. But if I said, guys, get an order of surname, or get an order by height, or get an order by something, I've got to say which attribute of you am I asking you to get an order by. So that's why we'd have to say dot, and then we'll use our getter. So if I could say, get an order of rating. So now I'll say view dot get rating. So you see I would compare the attribute get rating against get rating and now I'm going to do a swap. Now again the temporary variable um, are you focused back there? Focused! Um, <coughs> now what you'll see is if I go here um, I want to create a temporary but now I want to create a temporary of this variable. How do I do that? And that's tricky because now all you do is you literally just say of the data type view temp or sorry, you guys were liking calling it swap, but whatever. Um, is equal to views position i. Uh, views position i is equal to views position j. Guys, some people get confused with this. The, 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 the value you put into views or you put into the swap, you then overwrite in the next step. Then you make the one that you overwrite with the swap value. But uh, yeah, you should be able to sort of pick that up. Now, <coughs> are you guys happy that this sorting method would work, right? Yeah. Now, um, I'm going to do the same for descending. So I'll just copy the whole method, copy, paste. Should probably put an enter after the curly bracket because that's not cool. And then I'll then call it D, I'll, I'll be with you now, DES, so descending. And for the descending, all I would do is I'll swap this value here. Now, technically, a naming convention, I should say, ascending by rating. So the user knows yeah. that it's by rating. Because if I just say sort descending or sort ascending by what? Um, so now in my user interface, now that I want to run these methods, when I click the all button, I would want to run, there's a method that I already created called display all. When I click the um, the, I'm just going to create a couple other methods, private, void, I'm going to remove this. We've only got three ratings in there. Um, this, uh, then I'm going to say sort ASC. And then all I'm going to do for sort ASC is I'm just literally going to go um, vman dot sort ASC by rating, semicolon. Then I'm just going to say display all. You guys get that? And I'm going to run that method when, and for the descending one, exact same thing. The only difference I'm going to call it DESC. I'm going to sort by sort ascending rating. Instead of that, I'm going to sort descending rating, and then I'm going to display all. Now I just need to make sure I code the buttons. Descending should run uh, sort descending, and my ascending should run sort ascending. When I run this now, I press play. Uh, you'll see that my screen has got. If I press all, it says Frank Jones, Jim Cricket, James Junk. <laughs> And then now, if I say descending, <coughs> it's the same, 10, 7, 6. And if I go ascending, it swaps around 6, 7, 10 rating. 
So will you just connect your HDMI connected to the, the the method? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, in your um, in your UE. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, literally, all I did is I called oh, the method yeah, sort by yeah, sending. Yeah, V Man, Man is my video manager, yeah. which is my instance of my manager class. I think uh, I added three uh, things to it in this example and worked with that. All right, guys, that's the end of this video. Um, we, yeah, uh, you're now going to give you an exercise. Goodbye. <laughs>